Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Island. Here we are for another of our first look, first play videos. Now, <clears throat> today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Mech Warrior Online. Now, it's a game that I have played quite a lot in the past. I'm not new to the game, but we're playing it from essentially a brand new account, brand new person perspective. So, uh, Mech Warrior. Uh, stems from a uh, essentially a tabletop miniatures game uh, which has recently uh, had a bit of a resurgence with a whole bunch of new uh, plastic miniatures from a company called Catalyst but also a number of games MechWarrior 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, throughout the uh, 90s and then uh, they were all single player um, campaign stories essentially where you are piloting a giant uh, robots with a whole bunch of weaponry. Now, uh, the tabletop game, there is essentially a close combat set of the weaponry, but you'll find in this game, it is all based around ranged combat weapons. There's no close combat weapons if you are familiar with the Battletech universe, which is essentially the Battletech lore, of which there's tons of lore and books and a whole bunch of stuff to read online about if you're into that sort of thing. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff about that where they do close combat. But in this game, it's all around ranged combat. Now, essentially, the game is a player versus player game uh, where you have two teams that go into battle from a matchmaker, 12 people on each team um, in, a, in a various different mechs, which you then battle it out. So that's the principle of the game. There's no campaign story in MechWarrior Online itself. So the first thing you'll have done, you'll have created your account, downloaded the game, installed it, uh, and clicked play and logged in. And the first thing you'll see is a little tiny window on your screen. And the first thing you have to do is click that settings button and change the resolution to fit the size of your screen and go for um, a, a full screen window or a full um, full screen game, depending on how you prefer to do it. I normally have it in a window because I've got other things going on. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to click into the launch tutorial so here we are mech warrior academy learn to control your m and master your mech press escape to exit press r to target an enemy when the red target marker is in view the year is 3051 Humanity has spread out amongst the stars, bringing their hopes, their fears, and their wars. The great houses and clans vie for territory and honor, using gigantic fighting machines known as battle mechs. You as a child of that conflict are about to join that war. Some controlled captain Adams, ready for another one? More meat for the grinder, huh? Just patch me through. Welcome, recruit, to your first taste of iron and steel. My job is to make it a little less likely for you to crash and burn the moment you step on the battlefield. Let's drop you down here where you won't get your ass shot off right away. You're sitting on top of a fusion reactor in a multi-ton war machine the size of a building. <laughs> Time to learn how to use it. This is your augmented training hut. On your right, the training roadmap. It lets you know how you're progressing. Okay. Click continue. On your left, the checklist. It shows your objectives and activities. Okay. Have a look around your cockpit. And when you're ready, power up your battle mech. Okay, so there you go. We can look all around our cockpit. So point to note here is um, this is uh, an older game, at least 10 years old. I can't remember exactly when it released, but it, it's, a, it's an older game now. It was done on the old Crisis engine. So the graphics are dated. There's no doubt when you look at the graphics in it, it is dated. But at the same time, it is absolutely playable. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still, they still hold up well enough to have a decent game. But playing this compared to your new games of today they will look and feel dated right okay so we've looked around the cockpit that's where we are 
in the cockpit of our battle mech. Looks very much like an aircraft style cockpit. And we're going to press P to power up. Reactor online. Sensors online. Hello? You there? All systems nominal. There we go. So that's the complicated HUD you're looking at. And that's why we're giving you access to a field manual. Just hit escape. Here you've got buttons for game settings and such, but you can also click on HUD elements to display a field manual entry. Okay. Click away at the display to pop up more information. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, you've pressed escape, which essentially brings up like a pause menu you'd have in a lot of games. So you've got your settings and quit academy exit game down there, but you can actually click on elements of the HUD. So. There you go, you can click on that compass here and it tells you all the different symbols, um, direction of your torso, leg direction, there's obviously target, compass, west, northwest and so on, target icons as well, so target tracked by a beacon, a ECM and all this type of stuff, so lots of things there. You've got this Hit one. escape again to get back in control of your battle mech. This one here, vertical speed indicator, so giving vertical speed there as well, and full speed, okay. So you can do that, so you can click on lots of different elements of the HUD. So hit escape again, there we go. To help you learn the controls, your mech comes equipped with a cheat sheet. Press and hold F1 at any time if you need a reminder of what button does what. Try it now. Okay. Ah, pretty cool. So in the past, if I remember Mech Warrior 4 at least, maybe 3 as well, came with this little sort of map that you would pull out on a piece of paper that came in the box uh, with the CD that had this on. But now you've got this here, so Battle Mech Control Key, so you press and hold F1 and we can see exactly what all the keys are. Now, this assumes that you don't remap any of the keys, and it may be that in the future you want to remap the keys um, to something that you prefer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now you know where to look. Don't forget it's there. Use it. First things first. Let's get that battle mech moving. A battle mech drives like a tank. The mech goes where the legs are pointing, not where you're looking. Okay. Ignore that fact, and you'll find yourself jammed up wondering why you're not moving. Now, since you're a raw recruit, you get extra help to show where your legs are pointing. Look down. That arrow shows you where your legs are pointing. The okay. mech will move in that direction. That makes it easy. There it is. You found it. That arrow points forward for the mech, no matter where you're looking. Well, off you go. Hey, don't scratch the paint. Okay, so we're going to turn left. There's no strafing or sidestepping in a battle mech. You've got to turn to change direction. Okay. Uh, done all of that. This brings your view over around on top of your legs and your direction of travel. So the only one we have to do is center legs under torso. Now here's an issue, it's currently unbound. Okay, so let's find it on here. So that's an interesting one. So center legs under torso. We need to do it, but it says it's unbound. Interesting, it is unbound. So, how do we... That's key map, how do we change it? Thing. Interesting. So keyboard. Ah, oh, there we go. Actually, ah, click controller. That's why. Okay. So let's find center legs under torso. Where is it? At weapon groups. Stealth armor, artillery strike. Uh, we've got to find it. We go movement center. This one here. Um, so bind key. Gee, 
each. Uh, let's just do this one for now. No, because I want to do that one because it's used for something else. Um, no, okay. So it doesn't. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, let's try that one then. No, that's weapon door toggle. Okay, there you go, that would do. Right, for now, just to get this done. Um, oh, my word. Uh, okay, so exit the changes. What an interesting <laughs> um, issue. We've got that. This shifts your legs so they line up with where you're looking. You now have the basics to controlling all battle mechs. And now, let's look at your weapons. The status of each of your weapons is displayed in the lower right of your HUD. So you might find one of the controls there is unbound, and you actually then have to sort that out. So, okay, fine. Uh, that's done. Uh, okay, so status of each weapon is displayed in the lower right of your HUD. There you go. That's all these down here. Um, okay, so we've got weapon name, currently selected weapon, weapons in optimal range, green. Weapons not in optimal range, yellow. Ammunition, cooldown, not ready, if it's got a red bar in it, disabled. Okay, and if it's great, it's out of range. Weapons attached to the torso at the cross, weapons attached to the arm circle. Okay, pretty clear. Weapons are clustered into groups that fire together when triggered. Okay. I'll just enable your weapons and off you go. Okay. Fire, um, interesting. So we've got fire weapon group one. That's your auto cannon, a ballistic weapon. weapon That's two. a large laser mounted on your right arm. Those are medium lasers. Those are small lasers. They recharge quickly. Weapon group five. Again, we've got two unbound and a one unknown here, which is all weapons alpha strike. Uh, which is another interesting one. So I'm not sure what at KOEM 102 is. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, dear. So, um, no, not controller. We want keyboard. This is a bit of a pain having everything that's uh so fire weapon groups uh weapon group six okay so that's fire weapon group five uh for the purpose of this unlock arms okay See target lock. Where's arms? Mech arm lock. Ah, toggle arm lock and arm lock. Ah, so if you've got it set to toggle, <laughs> that's a... okay. And then all weapons alpha strike. Okay, don't even know what that is. So let's go with that one. <clears throat> right, so all weapons out. Alpha, alpha strike. strike fires all weapons. Your arms are now unlocked and can move freely. It's because I would normally. The extra toggle, ridicule shows but... where your arms are aiming. Those are short range missiles. Okay. Try shooting your large ballistic weapons run cool and have higher rates of fire, but well, congratulations. I'm thoroughly convinced that with minimal help, you seem to be fully capable of finding your own shiny brass backside. Okay. So yeah, a bit of a faff with the controls at the beginning. Uh, it's a shame they're not- um... Next up, 
Your battle grid mini map and compass. With like essentially a new account. Make your way so. out of the landing zone to the next stage. That's a waypoint. The blue smoke and symbol marks it as an objective to go to. Okay. That symbol appears on your compass and battle grid mini map. Compass, battle grid mini map, that's the bit in the middle. Okay, objective waypoint. Off you go. Work your way over there and run through the smoke. Don't get lost. Okay. Off we go. Right. There you we go. Made. Now let's see how well you drive that battle mech. Start the challenge by going through the green start marker. Follow the arrows. Okay. And make your way through each yellow marker as fast as you can before the clock runs out. Okay. Start the challenge by going through the green start marker. So we kind of got a bit of a challenge to do to do our... Um do our tutorial. Not a bad thing, I think. Key here, obviously looking at the arrows. See the smoke through here. And there we go. So if you are able, so this is really, really good, right? So if you are able to um, pass at the highest level of pilot challenge you get extra money to start with so pilot uh, challenge one passed uh, 500,000 sea bills which is a decent amount congrats recruit you made it through so let's see what's next on the agenda so yeah if you uh if you if you don't do so well on the first one once you've learned the course go and do it again and again and again and try and get that gold rank uh and that definitely worth doing right definitely going back and doing it a couple of times just to try and get that quick time see those pillars of light they mark the starting point for an academy challenge that one reruns the pilot challenge for a chance to earn any awards you missed that one leads on to the next stage basic targeting just walk into the light okay going to walk forward into this one so let's get you dealing with the enemy one of the most important skills to master is targeting okay enemies appear as red arrowheads on the map and as red diamonds on the compass friendly forces appear in blue that's me on your map okay red and blue so go find the enemy Enemy mechs need to be in line of sight to show up on your radar. So keep a wary eye out. Find, target, destroy enemy battle mechs, use R. Target acquired. Shortly after targeting, a detailed scan appears. Targets farther away take longer to scan. That's a boar's head atlas. A big bad assault mech. 100 tons of bad attitude. Okay. This is the enemy's damage indicator. When you target a mech, you get a full scan of its weapons and health, front and back. Each part of a battle mech has separate health and armor. Okay. Gold is full health, orange is damaged, and red means dangerously low and about to go. Ouch. 
<laughs> okay. One way to kill a mech is by destroying its center torso. Quite a small, you notice, on the waist there. So it does come down quite narrow. So even though you're aiming here, that's not its center torso. Interesting. Always check your damage indicator. The center torso on this one is ready to blow. One shot may do it. Okay. Target destroyed. That's the way, but be careful. There's another battle mech behind you. Anything out of you won't show up on your map. Target acquired. And that's a Battlemaster Hellslinger. An 85-ton assault mech with lots and lots of weapons. The torso on this one is untouched. But a battle mech can also be taken out by destroying both legs. And by a great grand coincidence, this one has one leg gone. Shoot the other to finish it off. So you've got to remember in terms of the right and left of the mech. So if you look at this one here, you're actually hitting uh, up here, which is interesting. But uh, this is the leg you need to go for. So it's the same as what you're seeing Two down, one on the go. picture above. Find the last enemy battle mech. Target acquired. Listen closely. There's another, much harder way to take out a battle mech. And that's to destroy the small, vulnerable window protecting the cockpit. The cockpit is a very small part of the head. Miss, your shot just hits the torso. Okay. That's the window he's talking about, right? So it's going to be quite small. Target destroyed. Ooh. That's all there is to it. Target, find the weak spot, kill. Of course, these ones aren't shooting back. Now here's a few more for you to practice on. Okay. Target acquired. One leg is gone. Go for the other one. Target destroyed. New target The armor acquired. on the cockpit is gone, but the vulnerable spot on most battle mechs is quite small. Target destroyed. New target acquired. That one's hiding in the smoke. Try thermal vision to cut through the haze. Target destroyed. So thermal vision with H. Target acquired. Targets farther away take longer to scan. Target destroyed. New target this one's acquired. Cord. Just shoot it in the chest. Target destroyed. Okay. Achievement unlocked. Basically, well, we're complete. just about done here. But there's way more to learn about piloting a battle mech. For that, we provide a playground to train and test yourself and your battle mechs. Welcome to the Mech Warrior Academy. Test weapons and battle mechs at the firing range. Survive the gauntlet. Improve your targeting skills. And try out new battle mechs. Okay, congratulations, you've completed basic training. You can continue to explore the academy or return to the main menu and play a match. That's what we're going to do.
So not a bad uh, tutorial intro, pretty much takes you through everything, a bit of a faff with the controls. I don't know if that's because I have played the game on my actual account and I have the controls and it's copied it across and I do change some of the controls, um, but that was a bit of a faff, but uh, we managed to get through that. Met War Academy there, you can see um, uh, weaponry, shooting gallery, onslaught, survival. So we're gonna leave the uh, academy. So you can go back there and do more things and play with mechs. But in reality, um, doing that initial training, that's what gets you through. So and then interestingly here, so you've got basic tutorial complete gets you two and a half million C bills. You pick up 500,000 C bills for bronze, silver and gold each and for passing the pilot challenge uh, and also the achievement shiny brass uh, backside. So um, you do get some pretty hefty sea uh, bill rewards there. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a whole bunch of things in the UI. Now, it's not necessarily the best UI in the world here. Um, so we'll have to see what we've got. Um, so you can see down the bottom left-hand corner here, we have uh, General XP, uh, 5 million C bills. MC is like... Uh, a form of currency that you buy in the center here is all about the mech that is currently selected so what it is it's tonnage chassis variant uh, and it's in fact it's a trial mech which we'll come on to we've got what looks like the social buttons looking for group panel and a chat visibility um, we've got mech warrior news and we've got mech warrior events this is definitely a useful thing to to check um when you come into the game although the game's very old there's still lots of events and everything running uh so you can see here we've got an event which is the die will see january free mech event so if you click on it and if you're able to get one victory you'll get seven days of premium time that that's very useful that'll boost your uh xp and um uh credit income uh but then if you get match score all the way through here uh, if you get 9,000 match score, you're going to pick up a mech bay and a free direwolf, which is uh, an assault mech, which does cost uh, quite a few million um, C bills uh, and obviously has the gear on it as well. So, um, you know, C bills is king in the game uh, in terms of buying new mechs. Uh, right. So we, what have we got down here? We've got select mech. We've got inventory. So let's start here. Select mech. So you can see we've got um, different mechs here. So we've selected all. You can filter. So you can filter on Inner Sphere and Clan, which are the two different types of mechs. Um, and you've got a bunch of trial mechs here. We've got ah, four different assault ones. We've got four different heavy, four different medium, and four different lights. Now, I would recommend any new player coming into the game stay away from the assault mechs they seem like an a, a go-to for a lot of people they're, they're the most heavily armored uh they're, they've got the most weapons but they're very slow you'll need position know the positioning and everything else on the mech um the light mechs also very hard to use i definitely recommend people to go for mediums or heavies personally i think heavies are the best place uh to start um and uh don't waste that 5 million C bill straight away. Pick a trial mech and um, and play with uh, that first uh, to get a feel for kind of the mechs, the weapons, before you actually just jump in and waste a whole bunch of C bills on something you didn't, uh, didn't want. Plus, there's loads of resources online, videos, content creators to go and watch, and they will definitely help you out as well. Um, overall, uh, the community is is pretty friendly um until you get into the higher elite levels where things can be a little bit worse but that's the same in pretty much any game that you play um when you are in the thing here you can select obviously the mech and you know down the bottom here you've got different facts about the mech so let's i don't know let's let's just pick the marauder uh as our first mech here you can see lots of different you can go uh things about the mech itself you can enter testing ground to test it out uh, you can then go into things like the mech lab and, and so on. So weapon groups here. Um, you can go into the see what weapons are on it. So it's got 
five small lasers and two MRM 30s. Okay, that's what we've got on it. So medium range missiles and short range lasers. And you can see what's quite nice here. You can see if you hover over the weapon, you can see how much damage it does, how much heat it generates, what the cooldown is. The max range there at 320, the optimal range there at 160. And you can see the damage profile. So from zero up to that 160 maximum damage and then down to 375, the damage will start dropping off. And you can see the same here with the MRMs uh, as well. Um, okay, so then we go back. We've got inventory. Obviously, that's all the that mechs you own, weapon systems, equipment, omnipods, and supply caches. Supply caches, essentially, as you earn uh, points along here, um, that will build up supply cache, and that you can then open that, and that will have all sorts of things in it, from decals to weapons to all sorts of different things. So, And, of course, if you get rare and uh, ones, you'll get better stuff in it. Uh, achievements we saw that it's like a standard achievement panel for doing things drop manage drop decks that tends to be for sort of the faction play convert experience that's if you're uh, wanting to spend with statistics you've got leaderboard um, a redeemer code titles and badges testing rounds and academy we already covered so the main part of the game obviously is these mechs but what's the big thing is the ability to configure those mechs so when you come into here, you can see essentially the mech itself and what it's got. So you've got armor. So you can actually decide, you can strip armor off areas. So for example, if you had no weapons on this arm, you could just strip all the armor off it and use the weight elsewhere. The key is the weight, right? That's the main key is obviously there's a max weight limit. Um, you can change engines so the engines can be bigger and smaller and that can um, change the speed, uh, maximum speed of the mech. You've got um, where it says this like symbol here is energy hard point. So you can see here is currently zero because we've got two energy weapons equipped. So it says you can have two in this arm, two in this arm and one in the head. And then in the right and left torso, we've got one uh, missile hard point. Uh, in each so that's where we can put missiles so it determines the, the the different mech types determine what weapons you can have and then here you have anti-missile system it's not currently the best thing to put on your mech in the game right now um, but essentially uh, that anti-missile system will protect your mech from long-range missiles that ne don't necessarily require line of sight so and some mechs are specifically designed uh, to carry more than one of those and be very good the final thing you've got here is um, ECM. So this mech can carry ECM, and ECM can help you and your friends remain untargetable at longer ranges, which is incredibly useful. Any weapon that's not an energy weapon, so your ballistics and your missiles, will require ammunition. So here we can see we've got six tons of ammunition. So don't forget, it's all very well equipping the weapons, but make sure you've got enough ammunition. On top of that, we saw on the weapon profile that it generates heat. Now, heat is essentially how a mech is controlled in terms of its weapon firing. So we've added these double heat sinks in here and on the engine here, and that essentially allows the uh, mech to cool down enough that you can fire the weapons quite often. And you can see here we've got a heat management uh, set here and then we've got the double heat sinks here which is five double heat sinks plus ten in the engine that's what you can see here and you can see that every single slot is used up and that's because you have these structure slots and that all comes from um, looking at the different upgrades so you can change your armor um, the armor can be made lighter but it will take up structure slots uh, and it's something that you're just, it's the take, it's very complicated. The, the mech lab, I think it's very complex. It will take a while of getting used to. Um, and, but you, but it offers huge amounts of configuration, huge amounts. But I definitely recommend early on going and looking at some of those resources online to get an idea of what you might want to equip. It'd be very easy to go into battle with something, um, that is, is almost useless, um, without having some of that. So you've got your equipment engines, you've got consumables as well. Um, skills, as you gain experience, you'll be able to 
um, uh, add and learn skills. So this is a skill for the mech itself, not for the pilot. So you'll have to do this and learn this for every mech. And that's the grind. That's the real grind. So you've got the credit grind, which just allows you to buy stuff. And then you've got the XP grind, which essentially allows you to put skills uh, on the mech. And it, you know, it, it's clear here, you've got firepower skills, survival skills, mobility, jump jets. The key here is you can only have a maximum of 91 of these skills active, right? So you will not be having everything on here, right? You'll only be able to have 91 of them. And you've got weapon groups, uh, which we already looked at for this mech. Uh, camo specs, so you can put patterns, change colors, put stickers, bolt-ons, which are like bits of equipment on there, um, which don't do anything. They're just cosmetics. So there's a whole bunch of cosmetics. So the game itself offers huge amounts of customization, huge amounts of customization, both in the look and cosmetics, uh, and also in terms of the configuration of how you want to play the mech. Do you want to have it a close range brawler, a long range sniper? Do you want to be a missile boat stacked with a whole bunch of long range missiles? So lots of different configuration, but not everything is good. And again, that's why I recommend checking those resources online. And there are lots of them out there. And you can see the graphics, you know, they're not bad. You know, it, it's dated, but not bad. Not bad. So there you go. Right. Without further ado, uh, given that we're in doing our sort of first 60 minutes into the game, um, the pilot skill rating is important in terms of what happens with the matchmaker. Um, and I recommend for certainly new players and anyone coming into the game is I would I would hide it. Right. So I would go to the settings here and you can see here hide tier in front end. Just disable it. Hide it. Um, it's not something to worry about think about um, just play the game enjoy the game um, when you get up into tier one that's when the game or certainly into tier two that's when the game starts to change and you start meeting you know really elite players by then you'll have played the game quite a lot and you'll have a much better feel for it i would just recommend turning that off forget about the stats the leaderboards everything just play to enjoy the game at the beginning it is quite a steep learning curve I'd say the principles of the game are um, the configuration is complex, but the principles of playing the game is simple, but definitely difficult to master without a doubt. So uh, what we've done is we've we've selected our trial mech, which is just there for us to use. It's cost us no C bills to use. Uh, and you can play with all those different trial mechs to get a feel for them. Um, but we've got our, our first mech here. And we're going to go to, you got a uh, quick play and faction play. Faction play, essentially leave well alone, certainly early on until you've got some friends in the game or join a unit. And then you've got quick play here, um, which uh, essentially you can see their matchmaking status, how many lights, heavies, and so on. Um, and click on that and we'll search for a game. Now, the game doesn't have the biggest uh, player base, so you'll definitely find a difference in uh, waiting times to get into a match, depending upon um, whether you're in prime time or not. So prime time play, definitely uh, very valid because you'll get into a game quicker. Uh, so that's definitely recommended. The other thing is, is that not having to worry about the fact it is an older game or that whatever the size of the player base is because the game is completely free um it's completely free to play and you can play it completely free to play and there are lots of events and things on which will get you mc for free and so on so you know yes you can spend real money on on things in the game but it's absolutely not needed to spend uh real money on the game um I would say, and it's def I would say it's definitely not pay to win at this point. Um, there's definitely been events where you can get hero mechs, which are mechs that you would pay for real money. They essentially earn credits quicker. They're a slightly different variant, but I wouldn't say the game is pay to win at all. I would say it's more pay to progress. Um, you can use the you can use real money to buy credits and 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 so on. Um, so. 
yeah, totally not not required. But here we are in our first match. So it's matched us here. You can see we've got the got the the green box here. It says C. That basically means you're a new player. You're a cadet, and you have that for a period of time uh, when you've played so many matches. Um, and you can see we've got 12 people on each team. We click the ready button to say that we're ready. The timer counts down to start. We've got a skirmish battle. Uh, a skirmish battle to destroy all the enemy mechs, okay? Uh, or the timeout with the most kills. That's what we've got. And I wouldn't worry about taking Lance Command or Company Command till you know more about the game. And then you can, you can actually chat to everybody on both teams. Uh, you can chat to your team and you can chat to your Lance. And you also, the important thing to note here is ambient temperature. So each of the maps do have ambient temperature and that will impact uh, your heat management. So if you find yourself in a very hot map and you've got a very hot mech build, then you will find that limiting uh, your ability to fire. So you always, when you're doing your testing, I definitely recommend testing at least on tourmaline. In fact, the one we have here is where I like to test in the, um, in the testing arena uh, from a heat perspective. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Every cockpit is also different. This is command. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. Uh, depending on the mech chassis that you're piloting. So you've got mech chassis, which is Marauder, Adder, Quick Draw. And then you'll see I'm in a Marauder 9M. And the Marauder 9M. Uh, is a variant of the Marauder chassis. If you press B, you've got a big map as well, so you can see big map and you can see where your team are going. Uh, it's definitely, um, you, you cannot go out on your own. You cannot hold flanks on your own or anything like that. This is definitely a game where you want to find your team and stick in a big group unless you are a very small fast mech or you're a sniper and if you're a sniper though um, you're very vulnerable so we've got our lance that's running over here so i'm trying to keep up with them target acquired affirmative so we've got our first target that has been spotted target spotted we do want to try and link up with the rest of our team. So we're just going to hold here. Ooh, we've already been shot by uh, something with long range into the shoulder. I'd say it, the, the learning curve is steep. Right, the learning curve is steep, so target spotted. Just keep plugging away at it, and uh, and it will come. There's no doubt. I say I'm absolutely not a good player of this game. In fact, I'm quite a poor player on this game. Uh, but this is uh, an, an aim of showing you what the game. Uh, looks Target like and it feels Acquired. like in the first sort of 60 minutes of playing the game. So we're going to stick with our team. They're going around the corner. Let's go with them. And see what we've got uh, so Target far. Uh, we've got an enemy round here. We've got lots over coming over the hill. Target spotted. There were salt mechs coming in. Okay, so let's go back around this way. That uh, mech that was around that corner does seem to have disappeared. Target spotted. There we go. We've got a, uh, a Phoenix Hawk there. Orange smoke is artillery, so we need to stay out of the way of that. Just holding back away from that artillery at the moment. We are a heavy mech, but we don't have that much armor. There is a, definitely a sniper out there. Ah, there he is. He's up on the uh, top over there. And you can see there that's out of range. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. And I also recommend having your mouse sensitivity as low as possible. Target destroyed. Okay. So we're going to come round here with Target our spotted. team. The team are all relatively close together. Target acquired. And what we're looking for is people that are, are vulnerable. This guy looks like he might be uh, only him and a couple of others. We've got a light mech in there New as target. well. One thing I've noticed is it has not reset my keybinds, but it has reset my sensitivity. So We're the sensitivity is too high. Target destroyed. Target acquired. Target spotted. Critical. 25% of the enemies are eliminated. Gotta watch the heat here. And that's what happens if you overheat. So, as you've seen there, overheating is bad. I did it to show you what would happen. So, you can see there that, um, one, the audio is very, very so let's turn that down a bit um, but to, to show you there the um, the overheating so uh, the thing to do is at the beginning of the game and I can't believe I still haven't made it a toggle is press your O button that's override that means that instead of overheating and shutting down you will actually overheat and begin to take some damage but it means you don't shut down in front of an enemy and essentially die in that situation. So uh, also looking into the settings then, when we go into sensitivity, sensitivity way too high. I prefer to have my um, mouse DPI to the minimum and then control the sensitivity in game with this. So I can't remember what I normally have it set on. So I don't know, let's try that to start with. Um, because I haven't played this game in quite some time. Uh, but that then gives you a flavor of um, what a game uh, looks like. So let's let's come out of that one. So you can instantly leave the game. You don't have to stay and watch it, which is a good thing. And we got an achievement there, which was a heavy assist. There's 500 C bills. And you'll get some C bills for playing that game. So, But you come out of the game and just go straight into another. There's just, you know, that that's the thing is is make the, the, the most efficient uh, uh, use of your time. So if we look at, we've got um, this uh, summoner, we've got this linebacker, um, and we've got an archer. I think we're going to have a look at the summoner. We've got a, a cadet bonus there as well. So we're going to select the summoner. So if we look at this mech's weapons... This mech has two Ultra AC-10s, right? They're both mounted here in the torso. So the arms have no weapons in them, right? No weapons in those arms at all. So they're both high up on the torso. And that's important to note where your weapons are, one for which side of a corner you want to peek, but also if you're going over a ridge line, you actually only have to expose the top half of the mech. So let's go with that. So... Um, you can see here we've our supply cash progress has gone up to 30 and we now go into our um, next game. So you can see even with that uh, loadout there of the two uh, lots of MRMs and the, and the five small lasers that that still did ramp the heat up. You've got plenty of shots off, but you see how the heat ramps up. So as soon as you drop into battle, hit that O button. You don't want to 
um, overheat like in that last game. So pick any map, but this, obviously you can see which ones are gonna be the hotter maps and which are gonna be the cooler maps. So we're gonna put in for some Emerald Veil vale here and some Domination, try and get a different map. You'll find that Canyon Network is probably the most popular map in the game. Okay, so we did get Emerald Veil, vale, but we've got Conquest this time. So Conquest is essentially there are five control points on the map and you need to control those control points. Now, as a, as a heavy and an assault mech, you tend not to be uh, capturing uh, uh, that many points. That tends to be the light mechs. Um, however, obviously, you'll be fighting over the ones that are in the middle um, until of such time as either there aren't many enemy left and you have to capture points um, or until uh, you win uh, by default. Okay, so here we are back with our 12 versus 12. You can see we've got our little cadet badge on there and that we're in our trial mech, which is the summoner D. And you can see what servers you're on here. So I can see I've got a ping of 83. That means I'm on the American servers um, because you will just get put onto whichever um, region server. And, and to be honest, I, I haven't found any issue being based here in Europe and being uh, on American servers. Uh, that ping is, is absolutely playable. There's no doubt if you, um, whether you're a Battletech fan, um, whether you just like, um, you know, running around in, in big stompy robots, um, shooting guns. Uh, yeah, and this is working. definitely the... Oh, oh, there we go. We've got yeah, some... I remember, the, I remember that. Uh, voice chat is, uh, is enabled on here. Um, but... Um, well, thank you. I'm just going to mute that for the purpose of this. Uh, we... Uh, this is definitely the best game on the market, I think, for this type of game and combat. Um, it is pretty much different right now to anything else that's out there. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend um, at least giving this game a go. Reactor. At online. least giving this game a go. Sensors um, online. Weapons online. You know, you can say it's got its issues um, in matchmaking and, and so on. Um, there aren't many games out there that haven't. So as soon as we land, we're going to hit the override and we're going to capture this first uh, point. So to capture a point, you just walk inside it while the line is flashing blue. Um, we can get rid of that now. While the line is flashing blue, you are capturing it. If you get shot while you're in the capture point, you will stop capturing the point. And you can see the five points just underneath the board at the top and essentially okay. that's counting uh, up looks like we're going left and right okay so it does look like uh, the team has massively split here um, all right I see several several coming up see lines coming up echo two echo three so I'm gonna follow the team over onto the right hand side okay, here and go for two. echo uh, team split like this is less than ideal. Um, ideally, you'd want the light mechs or the faster mechs to go after the points here, but uh, it is what it is. The other thing to note on this mech is we have jump jets. So next to our speed bar in the in the bottom middle there, you can see we also have a, a thinner uh, orange bar, which is now going down. That's because we have jump jets uh, allowing us to essentially do short hops or fly a short distance the other thing it can mean is that while we're here capturing this point we're on top of a cliff we actually now want to come off this cliff we can literally just walk off the cliff and normally you would take leg damage but you can now use your jump jets to stop yourself taking any damage jumping off high buildings. So straight away we've got an enemy spotted here which is quick draw and this is where essentially your team can spot for you particularly if you have long range missiles. Okay. So he took a, he's taking a lot of damage 
and uh, our team are getting hurt pretty hard there. Okay, got to be careful because friendly fire is in this game. So if you if your friend runs in front of you as you're about to shoot, you will damage him and you will get penalised for it. Right, you will get penalised for friendly fire. So the one thing we can see straight away is the sensitivity is now much better. Okay, let's go and help this guy out. Now, with uh, with the auto cannons, these ultra auto cannons, they can jam. There we go. And he has gone down, so we've taken that guy down. So he kind of got caught out on his own. They are a quarter of the way there. Do not let them push ahead. Uh, let's come around here and see what we've got. Target acquired. Alright, so we've got a direwolf there now. That's a particularly nasty mech. We're gonna have to be careful of him. Let's watch out for our team. Still watching out for our team. Another nasty mech there. New target acquired. Jaeger mechs. That's a heavy mech. So let's pull back. Make sure you press R. That guy has some serious firepower. He out damages us. He out damages us. Unfortunately, he had uh, he had obviously a very good um, very good build, and he was actually clearly able to out damage us even though he is also a heavy mech but there you go so we got two kills and there three assists and 688 damage done so um again giving you a flavor of a slightly different mech that is ballistics it's all ammunition um and you just do uh just go in there and uh, and have some fun uh different type of sound with the ballistics so you've seen energy weapons missile weapons and ballistics the advantage i think you saw with those ballistics there they tended to be a bit cooler energy weapons tend to be a bit hotter um though um if you start combining ballistics that can get um pretty um hot if you're firing lots of them all together and you also get penalized for mounting um too many of the same weapons so there are limits to how many weapons you can shoot of the same type um uh, without incur incurring uh, heat penalties and essentially that's to stop you just putting the best weapon in the game or the biggest weapon in the game and mounting as many as you can if you do that you'll just overheat and you'll die and it's a thing called ghost heat so you know in the first 60 minutes we've shown a couple of battles we've been through the tutorial we've had a quick look through the mech, mech lab that's kind of what you're going to do in the first 60 minutes um, when you first log into this game um, but I highly, highly recommend that you maybe do this for the first 60 minutes, but then uh, go and do some research online and look at some mechs and builds. Um, maybe go in, into some content creators live stream um, or watch some YouTube videos to get a flavor of what the different mechs are. Don't use those C builds until you absolutely have to make the most of those trial mechs um, and, uh, and, and uh, get some C builds in your pocket before you... Um, spend a whole bunch of them there are there are definitely um we'll come out of that there are definitely good and bad builds um and as you get higher up in the uh in the game uh you'll start or play the game for longer you'll definitely start to see the difference in terms of um good and bad builds uh, so you can see there, cadet bonus there. We got 1.1 million C bills and seven days of premium time. That's absolutely excellent. 
So, uh, you know, a, a great bonus uh, for new players coming into the game. As I say, do I recommend the game? Yes. Are there, um, you know, are the graphics dated? Yes, to a point, but I still think they're, they're, they're easily playable and, and uh, easily good enough to have fun in a game, especially as someone that plays an awful lot of retro games. You know, these graphics are still absolutely uh, excellent. So, yeah, it, they, they, you know, would it be better on a brand new Unreal Engine? Of course, um, but they're not bad, right? They're not bad, definitely playable. Um, there are issues with the matchmaker, but you really won't encounter that until you get to higher tiers. It is a steep learning curve. Uh, the mech lab is complex. Uh, the, the, the variety, and, and that's because there's so much variety in terms of what you can do with your builds and your mechs. Definitely go and have a look online. And if you are a Battletech fan, please, please, it is it is not the tabletop game. It is incredibly different from the tabletop game. Law builds do not work in this game. So please don't come in here and play it like um, you think you might from playing tabletop Battletech. It is a completely different thing. It is pure mech on mech. There's no requirement for infantry or tanks and those sort of different types of weapons on the mech. So... Um, and, and it has to be that way for the type of game it is, right? Okay, so, um, you know, it's Battletech universe, um, but it is different. And, the, you know, if you want to play um, sort of closer to tabletop, of course, there is the Battletech game, which you can play. And, of course, what there is now, with, certainly with an updated engine as well, and that that's something that we're also going to be doing a first look at, is Mech Warrior 5, made by the same company, I think it was released in about 2019, if I recall correctly. Um, and essentially, that is a single player or certainly a yeah single player sort of campaign driven a game much more reminiscent of the old MechWarrior games, whereas this is obviously the player versus player one. Uh, a, a big shout out to PGI, my word, please, please do a MechWarrior online too. I know it's unlikely to happen, um, but if they were able to redo this game in a new engine, redo some of the issues in the game as well um, and, and fix those it would be fantastic and yes I would go back and get all those mechs again so um, there you go ladies and gentlemen hopefully that's given you a bit of a flavor for mech warrior online what it is what it's about how it plays how it looks um, and, uh, and and I hope after watching this uh, you'll you'll give it a go uh, and just you know have a bit of a look see have a play with it um, and as I say, uh, don't drop it too quickly. Um, give it some time, play a few games, maybe drop out and come back another day, play a few more games. Um, and, and as I say, please, please look at those resources online. There's loads of them out there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments below. And uh, as always, you know, if you want to see more videos, then hit that subscribe button. It's free for you to do, but it means an awful lot to me. Uh, and I say I hope you got something out of seeing the sort of first 60 minutes of what you as a new player will likely experience within this game. Tune in for more first look videos coming over the next few weeks and months. You've been watching The Ghost Style.